Hello and welcome to The Bridge, the TV show that features happenings around the Woodbridge Township School District. I'm your host, Darren Soretto. It has been quite a while since our last episode of The Bridge, and we are excited to feature new voices in the Woodbridge Township School District. Since our last episode, the district has returned to in-person instruction, welcomed new central office administrators, and emphasized changes that unite and celebrate our diverse community. Today, we have the district's new Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Mr. Kendall Ali, to talk about the district's initiatives as well as school projects related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. In sports, we will have a student correspondent from Colonia High School reporting on the amazing accomplishments of the Colonia High School girls basketball team. And finally, our music segment will feature Nathan Regis, an accomplished young guitarist and composer who recently won an award for his original music. It's a full show. Come right back after the break. Welcome back to The Bridge. I'm Darren Soretto. Now, before we welcome our first guest, let's take a look at the artwork we're featuring here on our set. Our first piece was submitted by art teacher Kelly Zombach and was created by first grade artist Chloe Azaria Atemka during Hispanic Heritage Month as students learned about Pablo Picasso and Cubism. Notice Chloe's emphasis on bright color and how she shows multiple viewpoints in the same composition. The second art piece featured today is submitted by art teacher Kimberly Zadigan and was created by 12th grade artist Sophia Sakura from Woodbridge High School. It is a low fire clay and glaze cultural mask. Students researched their country of origin, then sketched to conceptualize a mask design that represents their country. Representing Polish ancestry, Sophia created a three-dimensional mask that represents the white eagle, a Polish national emblem. She continued to glaze the bird in the colors of the Polish flag to further relate the mask to her ethnicity. Notice the fine feathering detail around the eye holes and the contrast of the bright red with the more muted black and white. It really is an exquisite piece. Great job, Chloe Azaria and Sophia. Remember, be creative and submit your own artwork to the bridge through your art teacher. Your work could be featured on our next episode. Now, let's welcome Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Kendall Ali. Mr. Ali, welcome. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. You know, you're our first guest in quite a while. And what an honor it is. <laughs> it's so good to have you. Um, so today, why don't you first tell me about yourself and how you came to work in Woodbridge Township. Okay. Um, I'm an uh, educator, lifelong educator, uh, mathematician, I would say. Um, I taught math uh, in another district, um, in addition to being a supervisor and taking on other roles. I'm uh, really passionate about mathematics, always been good at mathematics, uh, mm -hmm. thankfully. Um, I hear I get that from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just, I always had this real passion for not just math, but helping others to come, under, to, come to understand math. That's so um, that kind of brought me into the teaching profession. Okay. Um, I uh, graduated from Penn State with an undergraduate degree in actuarial science. Okay. Um, we are Penn State, had to throw that in there, right? <laughs> I knew you'd throw that in there. <laughs> of course. Um, so I worked as a teacher and then supervisor of math in another district. And then um, an opportunity actually came about to join the team here in Woodbridge. And I was fortunate to be hired as the supervisor of K-12 mathematics. That's great. You heard the call. Absolutely. I heard the <laughs> call. And the call was a lot closer to home than my other district. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Wonderful. gave me an opportunity to, uh, to really kind of make an impact. So I joined the team. Wonderful. That's, that's great. And, and what is the purpose of the diversity, equity, and inclusion department? Could you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the purpose of the office is really to create another mechanism to ensure that all students are able to succeed and maximize their potential. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're not only in compliance with all federal, state, and local regulations, sure. but we're also taking a lens of, of equity to both qualitative and quantitative data to look for opportunities of growth. That's wonderful. That's great. And, and what is your role in the professional development of the district and, and the focus for professional development this year in your department? So our goal for professional development is really, again, to make sure that we're equipping our teachers with all the tools that they can possibly have to best educate our students. So um, there was a call to action from some students that was really paralleled by our teachers. Teachers really came forward last year and, and, and voiced that they would like to have an opportunity to be better equipped to facilitate conversations around student identity, 
um, to implement some mandates that are coming down from the state regarding diversity and inclusion. And so we really wanted to make sure that our teachers were best situated in order to lead those productive conversations. Sure, definitely a lot of changes that we had to. Absolutely. Uh, yes, that's great. Um, how have the schools responded to the new DEI projects? How, how, what was the response? So the schools have done a tremendous job. Uh, so every school does have a school equity team who really does lead the work, uh, kind of drive the ship regarding uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion at their school. And so um, a lot of what they do to begin with was really focused on our uh, board approved celebrations of diversity. Oh, wonderful. And so they really thought creatively about how we could provide opportunities for multicultural education, mm -hmm. opportunities for the students to see themselves and the things that they study and to also learn about cultures different than their own. So our schools have done a phenomenal job in, in kind of recognizing these and, and kind of taking it to the next level. That's wonderful. I, you know, uh, I know the projects in the classroom have helped me become more aware of, of the different cultures in the classroom and within the school. Mm -hmm. So the projects are really doing what they're meant to do. Awesome. Yeah. It's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think is the, the biggest accomplishment uh, of the department this year? So I would have to say the biggest accomplishment, um, we do have our DEI showcase coming up. Okay. And having spoken with all the schools about their projects, mm -hmm. I think our biggest accomplishment, it's going to be this showcase. Okay. So this is an opportunity for every school to really highlight a couple things. Right. One, what are the different ways that they created an inclusive setting for all students okay. to make all students feel included, feel part of the school culture, right. um, celebrating the diversity of the district and, and of the schools. But to also engage students in a challenge-based learning project. Great. So um, too often, us as educators, as the adults, we tell the students, uh, these are the things that are important, and this is how we solve the problems, <laughs> right? We tell, right? Them, right? We tell yeah. them. Yeah. So our CBL projects, our challenge-based learning projects, mm -hmm. were an opportunity for the students to determine what's important to them. So important. And to really understand, to frame questions, yeah. to really engage in a research process sure. about about an, uh, something that's important to them mm -hmm. to come to a solution that they then implement. Give so, them the voice, right? Exactly. Yeah. Provide students with some voice and some agency yeah. and really let them be agents for change and advocates for the things that they are passionate right. about. Right. Oh, that's great. Well, well explained. Um, and what do you find most, what do you find most rewarding about your job, about what you, what you do? So the most rewarding part is just walking through the schools yeah. and seeing the change in the students. Okay. Um, to have the students, you know, I was in one particular school and I, I had a, uh, you know, a first grader run up to me and talk to me about, <laughs> oh, Condoleezza Rice or, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg yeah. or, you know, it happened to be Women's History Month and they yes. were describing some of what they learned. So. Yes. Um, to have the students run up to me with these big smiles on their faces and talk about, it could be um, representation from their culture, it could be something from a culture that they weren't familiar with. Right. Um, just to have the students come up and really explain how the things have impacted them. Yeah. Um, students who, who maybe identify in ways that, maybe they felt like they were on the margins at first, but mm -hmm. through the groups that were started at our schools, right. Um, right. They felt more included, like just sure. creating that spirit of inclusivity is really mm -hmm. all about what our department is about. That's great. I see that in my own class in the first grade. Mm -hmm. They're like, wow, I never knew about this person. You know, the amazing things that this person has done mm -hmm. and how they've changed the world, Absolutely. you know, in little ways. Right? And that is the goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. So what kind of feedback are you getting from the public about your work? Yeah, I think the feedback runs the gamut, like the feedback for a lot of different things. But I, I think the public has really reached out to appreciate all that we're, we are doing to create um, more opportunities for multicultural education, for example. Okay. Um, like uh, some members of the public have reached, about, reached out about their experiences in the past and kind of contrasted that with what we've done this year and last year as well. And they really do speak positively about what their teachers are doing, what the schools are doing, right. and what our district is doing to really embrace this uh, spirit of inclusivity that we're focusing on. Yes, wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about the DEI showcase in June? Absolutely. So the showcase includes two components. One is a gallery walk where each school has an opportunity to showcase uh, artifacts, initiatives, and projects that they created okay. uh, in the spirit of multicultural education. Sure. So really excited about That's that. Um, the, the, the creativity expressed by our students was really, really beyond what I think I could have imagined. Sure. And then the second component is an opportunity for each school to present their challenge-based learning project. Okay. So essentially, the challenge-based learning project 
really provides the students with an opportunity to come up with a problem or an area of opportunity okay. that they're passionate about, okay. to investigate it, um, use a research process to really think about it, and then to frame a solution to address it. So Excellent. really student-driven, provides yeah. an opportunity for the students to lead. Excellent. Everyone together, right? Exactly. Beautiful. Everyone together and re everybody really kind of galvanized behind a, a common goal. That's excellent. Well, Mr. Ali, I thank you so much for coming on the show. I've learned so much about uh, diversity and equity and inclusion, and, and I wish you the best of luck this year. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We have to take a short break, but when we come back, we are going to Colonial High School for our sports segment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming back to the bridge. It's time now for sports. Now, all of our athletes work so hard to balance school and sport, but some teams really stand out in certain seasons. This year, I've been hearing great things about Colonia High School girls basketball team. So we asked our Colonia High School sports correspondent, Alexa Levitin, to report. Over to you, Alexa. and she's gonna talk about foul shots. Um, so what goes in your mind when you're on the line gonna make a foul shot? Um, definitely my form and making sure that I'm in the right mindset to take the foul shot. And I know I have my teammates' backs like behind me, like they know I'm, they, they're confident in me, like they have high hopes for me and like I always knock it down. So, and I always think about like what's gonna happen next, like focusing on the next play and like making the shot. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like um, it's really high pressure since everyone's kind of silent and all the eyes are on you? I kind of take it as a confidence boost. Um, I know everyone, again, the teammates, like, they know I got it when I'm on the line. So I just take it one step at a time and I usually knock down the shot. Okay, and do you want to show everybody your foul shot? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Soretto. I'm here at Colonia High School with Coach Tierra and the Colonia girls basketball team. So I'm going to ask the coach some questions at first. Um, we can start off with how long have you been coaching for? Uh, so I have been here at Colonia High School for three years as the varsity coach, um, but I have been coaching uh, locally for about 10 years. Okay, and what's the most rewarding part about being a coach? Um, I would say the, the most rewarding part about being a coach is just the relationships that I get to build with, uh, you know, these young girls and um, kind of just the memories we get to make together. Mm -hmm. So how far along do you get in this year's season? Okay, so this season we um, ended up making it to the um, Central Jersey Group 3 state finals. Um, unfortunately, we did lose that game, but um, that is a huge, a huge accomplishment for Colonia Girls Basketball because it's the first time that it's ever happened. Wow, congrats. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so how did that make you feel as a coach for them getting So it? proud. Um, from the beginning of the season, kind of in the preseason, Season, the off season, the summer, we sit together and kind of chat about all the things that we want to accomplish. And of course, we always put state championship up there. Um, it's not something that's easy to do, and there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. So just being able to to get there, as much as we didn't win, um, getting there is just a huge accomplishment, and it just goes and shows these girls that you know one that we can belong there and two that you know we put all this hard work in it's something that we can you know realize and actually you know hopefully one day soon maybe next year you know happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so do you have any um, ideas of how you're gonna build on this and like for next year I mean just we're just gonna continue to, to work on the on all the things that we do you know the off season in terms of just uh, the individual work that these girls put in uh, 
lifting, conditioning, um, getting together once we are able to be together in the gym, getting some work in, uh, some summer league scrimmages, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll just keep really just building on all of the success that we had this season. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel when you know the seniors come to an end and they can they have to leave you? I know um, mm -hmm. we've had we had four seniors this year: uh, Destiny, Barber, uh, Anna Issa Ruiz, Francesca Rosario, and Kennedy Guncalvis, and uh, three of them have been with me since the beginning. So uh, this will be, you know, this will be a tough tough to say goodbye to them but I know that it's just although it's the end of us being together in our like basketball careers I know that we'll have relationship you know friendship for the rest of our lives so yeah it's gonna be tough um, but I'm just so proud of them and everything that they have accomplished individually and but then also as um, le like senior leaders on this team and and what they instilled in the younger girls so I know that's just gonna carry on going forward that's great thank you um, moving on to Maddie Chiera. Um So, how did you feel about getting the 1,000 points this year? Um, it was a very good accomplishment. I, it was one of my goals since I was, when I first started playing basketball, and then obviously when I came in my freshman year. Um, it felt really good to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you think that you were going to get here junior year, or did you think it was going to be senior? I honestly thought I was going to get it my senior year because with like COVID and everything and with our season being shorter my freshman year, I thought I was going to get my senior year, but yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you have a lot of pressure in regarding basketball because your name, your last name is like really known throughout your family? Um, I do feel pressure. I don't. It's more pressure that I put on myself with like upholding my family's like last name, but it's not negative pressure. It's definitely like fun pressure to like talk to my family and like hopefully beat my uncle's a thousand point record. So how do you feel about making it to the state championships? Um, making it to the state championship was something that, um, you know, it was really nice to see that our hard work and our dedication, um, not only to the sport of basketball, to the team, because we're more like sisters and family than anything, see that all of the work that we put in came to a success. Um, even though the, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, um, just seeing that hard work and dedication pays off is something that was really an eye-opener for not only us seniors, but you know, the entire team. Mm -hmm. So how important do you think team bonding and making sure you guys are all a family working together is for you guys? Team bonding has never been an issue for our team. We are like a, just a group of sisters. Whether we go over to someone's house or you know we're playing hide and seek because of a bus delay or just we're always doing fun things together. We all just love each other and I think that's what makes, that's what made our season so great was because we were all close off the court. We're always there for each other off the court as like a family. And so that's what made us like play very well together and make it to the state championships. Oh, that's great. What kept you guys motivated throughout it all? You know, there's probably some times where you were really close, there's close calls or you might have given up, um, but what kept you guys motivated through it all? Um, I think all of us together, you know, knowing that we're a family and just being there for each other was really what kept us motivated. Um, seeing that, you know, we won the holiday tournament and we were champions of that, I think that really opened our eyes and it made us realize that like anything is possible when you just put your mind to it and are dedicated to what you want. And so you guys are seniors, um, how do you guys feel about your basketball career coming to an end? Um, it's still an emotional subject. It's, <laughs> it's been a few months since, you know, unfortunately we lost, but I'm just really sad to go because basketball has been a big part of like my life and I know like my other fellow seniors it's been a big part of their lives as well and I think the biggest thing is just not being able to see my girls every day for practice and being able to joke around and stuff so I think that's definitely the most challenging part it's just honestly the team not so much the sport but definitely the team <laughs> <laughs> it's you, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Since you're uh, going to still be here, how do you feel about like losing your seniors? Well, they've when I came in as a freshman, they were always so like welcoming and they just like took me under their wing. So 
it's gonna be sad because I don't want to be like the oldest one on the team now, but it's gonna be sad. <laughs> You're gonna have to take their money. Yeah. <laughs> and so lastly, I just wanted you guys to explain a little bit about your shirts. I don't know if the coach wants to talk about it. Sure. Um, so uh, our shirts are um, their breast cancer, and on the back, I don't know if you want to just turn around quickly. It says faith over fear. Um, we do so every year. We do a pink out game. Um, we do this year have two um, members of our program who have family members who have either lost their battle to um, breast cancer or are currently fighting um, breast cancer. So. We just thought that this was a great way to kind of raise money for um, breast cancer, be able to donate back. Um, and then also it's just a constant reminder of how important faith in uh, each other, faith in our program, faith in um, you know just what we do here at Colonial Girls Basketball over the fear of whatever it is that we might be you know, dealing with. So um, it's been a great uh, kind of reminder for how we do things and the girls love the shirts um, and they love to wear them. And so I'm happy, you know, for that. Thank you, Coach Chiara. And thank you girls for coming out and answering these questions. Back to you in the studio, Mr. Soretto. Great interview, Alexa. And thanks to Coach Chiara and the Colonial High School girls basketball team for sharing your great season with us. Now we have to take a quick break but come right back for musician, composer, and seventh grader, Nathan Regis. Welcome back to The Bridge. I'm your host, Darren Soretto, here with seventh grader, Nathan Regis. Welcome, Nathan. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How's the school year going? School year is going great. Excellent. So um, tell us, you're a musician. What instruments do you play, Nathan? Um, so I started playing the guitar in third grade, and then a year later, I started playing the flute in fourth grade for band. OK. And which do you like better? Um, I actually like both do equally. You? Great, that's wonderful. Um, when did you first become interested in music, Nathan? Um, so I've always been interested in music, but when it came to learn an instrument in third grade, I learned the guitar. Great, that's great. And who influenced you? What music teachers did you have that really um, influenced you? So my two current teachers, Miss mm -hmm. Law and Mr. Ebenezer Premkumar, great. influenced me. Mm -hmm. um, Miss Law's here. Do you want to give her a wave? <laughs> um, so Miss Law is always encouraging me to try new things. Sure. Um, I had a... Uh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, tell us about it. Um, I had started uh, GNT Music mm -hmm. as a flute player, mm -hmm. but when she realized that I played the guitar, she told me to start playing the guitar for her classes. Mm -hmm. And she's also recommended me for a leadership program. Beautiful. Um, and recently she recommended me for a music composition competition. Uh -huh. uh, it was for the New Jersey Association for Gifted Children. Wow. Well, she recognized talent, right? She's mm, a great yes. teacher. And, and you also have a, uh, a a teacher that lives in India, is that correct? Yes. Mr. Ebenezer, is that right? Yes. And um, how is how is that going? How is how does he teach you virtually? Um, so he's always pushing me mm -hmm. and uh, giving me hard pieces to play. Right. And he just explains it really well. Great. Are there benefits to having a virtual teacher like that? Um, yes, there is benefits. Um, if you forget to get to class, right. you don't miss the entire class. <laughs> you just miss right. a few minutes, okay. and you also don't have to commute. Oh, right. No travel. No carrying your guitar on your back, right? It's right yeah. there. Uh, are there any challenges to the virtual? There are challenges. Um, like, you might, your internet might go out. Right. Um, the music might lag. Mm -hmm. You might not see the guitar clearly. That could be a challenge if, if it lags, right? Especially with yes. music, sure. So I hear also, Nathan, that you're a scholar. I know you're a scholar, a musician who participates in GNT music, uh, GNT enrichment, along with honors classes. How do you balance your academics with your music and everything else that's going on? How do you balance that? Um, I balance it by managing my time. Okay. Um, 
when I have homework, I try to finish it during class hours. And if I have to bring homework home, I make a list to see my priorities. And based on that list, I alter how much time I get to like play outside with my friends. <laughs> That's very important to make sure you have friend time, right? Social yes. time. Yes. Good, I'm glad you fit that in there. Um, so in addition to music, uh, do you have time for other, acti other activities that you like to do? Um, yes, I like trekking, rock climbing, uh -huh. playing soccer and cricket. Okay. Um, I also uh, enjoy learning about animals. Uh, now what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> uh, I would like to be a veterinarian. Wow, and why is that? Why do you want to be a vet? I just really love animals okay. and I would like to help animals in need. That's wonderful. Do you think that you might be able to play music for them? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I could. Yeah, and maybe even like a therapy, like a musical therapy with animals and you probably help a lot of people that way. That's wonderful. Um, well, I wish you the best of luck uh, as a veterinarian. Now, I hear you write original music, is that correct? Yes. And when did you start writing your own music? Um, I started writing my own music in 2020 on Father's Day. I made a song for my father. Uh, that must be dear to his heart. Yes. And that was right, uh, right as the pandemic had started, correct? Yeah. So you took, uh, you took advantage of that time being home and, and wrote music for your dad. How wonderful. That's great. Um, now, you recently uh, won an award for one of your pieces, is that correct? Yes, um, the award that I won was for the uh, New Jersey Association for Gifted Children Music Composition Competition. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah, it was for my piece titled Joy. Oh, beautiful. Do you think we could hear that here in the studio? Would you play that for us? Yes. Oh, that'd be awesome. We would love to hear that. Um, well, Nathan, it was great meeting you. Um, you are an amazing student, and you have such a bright future ahead, and, and I wish you the best of luck in all that you do. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you for bringing joy into the studio, out to our viewers, and into our hearts. And thank you so much for sharing your original piece and for being on the show. And thank you for watching The Bridge. I'm Darren Serretto, wrapping up this episode of The Bridge and hoping you'll join us next time.